watching it. Sandbox, they said, first we cheered for our Korean brothers for them to make it to the playoffs. But now it is dead serious. Whoever wins here will be carrying the entirety of APAC upon their shoulders and will be carrying the entirety of the Korean National League as well. I'm just going to take a moment. Going to take a small moment? I'm just going to take a moment because All right. how amazing is this set? It, it Not, is like, amazing. The set for us, the set for the players, those videos. And that was the first time we've seen them because when we were doing rehearsals, you know, they were still making this stuff throughout the night. Absolutely, like, I'm so hyped. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm so hyped, hyped as well. I'm hyped. I'm here, and I'm. It's just amazing, and I'm so excited to see what happens. There's, there's. I'm gonna. Say, I was about to say lore. There's mythology. That's the clever word for lore. Exactly. That I'm sure Milos knows bags of. But the idea of the sets, and I could be wrong about this, is that we are on. The plane beyond. We are like the portal through, like yeah. in between. With all the smoke and all the ice, and obviously, what's the name of the snake? Ouroboros. Ouroboros, around. Or chaos. The stone, if or chaos, <laughs> which surrounds the world. And the players under the tree, which has a name as well. Igrasil. Thank you. They're playing to reach this plane. They're yeah. playing to rise. Exactly so. And that starts <laughs> right now because it's the cool. six big phase is on its <laughs> cool. way. It is cool. And the opening ceremony was just absolutely yes. lovely as well. But let's get started. The bands have come through. A Jaeger that has been removed forces teams to now play with that Wamai and potentially an Aruni later on. The Mirror as well, very okay, influential operator on a map like bombed. Villa. That really allows you to uh, restructure these sites. Of course, the attack as well. Thatcher, pretty default. And then the Jackal to basically allow well, Damon Kia, I think, to roam a bit more aggressive. They do not want to be hunted down like that. So with these bands out of the way, let's go to Aviator Games first. Yeah, that's entirely it. The Jaeger ban is obviously the big play and point here. But if you are somehow unaware, this is the two Korean teams, two teams that have had a back and forth for a long time. Now, Sandbox, previously Mantis, previously C9, were the top dogs in Korea. They had a fantastic 2020. They were at one point unstoppable, but Damon Kia were the team that there was a few eyes on because there's players that have come from rosters like Scars, yep. there's players that have sort of built into what is now a great solid team and sort of vied for the mantle. And here, to have the best of three, Sandbox have come back in, Damon Kia have started to light again. Let's see who takes it. Important to mention is, is that both these teams will be at the six Invitational as well. So uh, great for them, especially, of course, Damon Kia, who uh, have never had that journey before. Managed to do that within less than a year. And as they're starting their attack here on the study side, just quickly drones are coming through as Rin actually is aiming or eyeing to go up to the 90 area. Now dropping the cam and seeing if they can get the approach here onto study. They want to get a bit of clarity here. They want to see if they can force a bit of space again. These two teams are going to be very familiar with each other. They've played each other pretty much everywhere and anywhere. I think the record is currently in Sandbox's favor in terms of engagement 64 to them, but it's obviously down to whoever can bring it today. Talking of Rin, hadn't had the best start into the tournament. And then when it mattered most on the third day, became the MVP, they stepped up. And that is so necessary and vital for the showdown because when they do, the entry is off the charts. And that is a game that you have to bring some pressure to against Sandbox. Rin, of course, also their MVP during the Mexico Major. Had a bit of a quieter group stage here as Yas retook his throne, really. But as you mentioned, when it mattered, he will be able to stand up there. And it's going to be Yas with the very first kill here off the playoffs. A cook grenade from underneath is the perfect parcel. No, doesn't quite get the connection it looked like it might make, but here Shial is going to hold off on the main stairs with Nova also playing a bit of a dangerous dance game. Rin takes the fight as Yas tries to push the other side. Nova is forced back, does not drop, which is the most important part, and has just thrown a canister and blown it to give himself a second of space. There is the drop from the opposite side now as Woogie Man goes down. In the meantime, they're going to see if they can restructure some of the hold. Harper was able to lock up a piece, but look at this. Rin charges up the main stairs, sees if they can get a bit of control over 90. And now, with just under a minute left, they've got to see if they can formulate some of the pressure with the buck underneath. 
Trying to find some more information. One of those cameras had been taken care of, but there could always be more. Ezreal is right on the edge right here, starting to push it, but it's the ankle hole from Nova. They will be able to pick up the kill. It is going to be Sandbox now with a man advantage here with about 35 seconds left. Remains are still being tossed in from below as Yas and Kat Sang are both on literally one shot HP here. They need to find an entry somewhere. The question is where as Coda just trying to find these long angles. It seems like they're going for uh, that is going to be the bar entrance. Now they can't quite formulate the angle, but as he said, 15 seconds, so it's going to have to be a blind charge through potentially a bit of a smoke. Yes, he's going to see if he can put the pressure on, but Nova locks the door and makes sure nobody gets close. No, dropped in the trade and behind the bar, they're going to see if they can get a quick stick. They have no choice. They've left it behind. Yes, is going for a bit of a cover. C4 locks off Coated and Sandbox open up with the first round. They open it up here on the defense, and even though they lost the entry, they still managed to bring it back there. The anchor hole's really coming in clutch there, taking care of Rin before more damage could be done. And as a result, it's cool, of course, as well. One of the members managed to dig himself right behind the bar. However, the diffuser was dropped earlier on, forgotten to be picked up. And, well, that leaves it back on the ground. As, yes, here, getting that entry. Here's the pre-fire, just fires right back. It's a miracle, by the way, Nova survived this. Yes. It was being pinched from two different <laughs> sides. I think it's due to the fact that Rin had the concussion now. They were literally about to push the main stairs as that drop onto that defuser eventually has went around. That was a very clean take. There's the C4 from Emery Taylor, who, to be fair, was downstairs for a long time. Not uncontested as well. There was a lot of damage that had been done between them and the bot. They'd found each other. Yep. Neither had got the solid kill, and that's because of the time, the pressure that Sandbox was trying to exert on the stairs. We saw them at the bottom of them. We saw Nova swing into a two, maybe three-person push. He might not know that, but he had the call that definitely one was an art. And to leave what is often a mantle and a sturdy thing and go, I know how they're going to want to take this, so I'm going to take it my way. Survived, just... I, I honestly, I still don't know. It's, it's, he was lucky that Rin had the concussion out. That is, that's a classic uh, case of siege timing right there. They were literally about to push up the main stairs, waiting for the concussion to pop, but as the moment the concussion gets shot, that is when, uh, when the swing came through. Sandbox! Won the first round. That means they can no longer go to Aviator Games up until round number four. And the statuary will be picked up next. Trophy statuary, that is. Nova ready with a nitro cell, however. Knows that they uh, could be putting up some pressure from the windows as he's playing inside of Astro. Come on, gaming. Uh, need to try and figure out a way to get in. And that's going to be the nitro. Doesn't land quite through the window, though. I'm not quite sure where it landed. Right in front, probably. And that means that Yas is allowed to keep on playing there. Yeah, that looks right. I thought that was going clean out the window. I guess I so one, too. one of the arcs changes there, but Nova couldn't quite get the lift he wanted, and that saves Yas's life. An important life to save. Yas, who has been a huge player, and obviously found himself the fourth top in KD across the entirety of the tournament so far. You're looking at what has been a solid lead in and his consistency is that big part of it is it's not that he's had a few huge games and then sort of backed off it's that he keeps driving look at this little top down picture in picture oh yeah that's very nice to see is it gives us the breakaway of what they're trying to do onto that wall the connection which is an important part of the players had a little bit of burn but still envy taylor underneath that's a problem okay, they're gonna have to deal with bomb. now that default uh, well the camera the uh, black eye has been taken care of but if they continue to try and go for the Maverick trick here. There is a pre-placed Nitro that will start to blow up. And as soon as that pops, actually way too early there, I thought for sure that we're going to try and get the Maverick with that. And that means we can see five and five, a second Nitro used without avail. Damn on Kia picking up sticks and heading over to study to see if they can get a very quick flat take. They've realized there is no entrance. They have the choice. Do they try and go for the Valkyrie underneath? Do they try and throw their way through the wall? They're not confident. And they're going to see if they can try and actually take the fight else. But Shile on the roam on the one eye is going to see if he can swing around and maybe get some revenge here as Rin gets the first and then gets dropped. There it is. But quickly the bodies are coming over either side. Cat Sang on one and someone else pushing the study door. It sprays, it's aggression and it's a trade out. Coated gets one more but 50 seconds. They still have to have the breakaway towards the split site. They're still going to get over the top of red. And that is going to be made tricky by MB Taylor creeping his way up and Nova. 
Yes, taking a lot of the damage there from the main stairs, but Nova managed to pick up the first one. A beautiful shot onto the 90 pillar there. Coated now, deciding that he needs to move up. 30 seconds. Nova digs himself in deep right here onto the pillar. This actually allows him to come in big at the very last couple of seconds as Coated is about to go for the plant. The cover will be there if Nova manages to sneak past. He knows about the player. He gets the kill as well. Now he needs to hurry up. It's Envy Taylor to try and stall it for as much as he can as he does put up but quite a lot of damage at the Woogie Man there who now tries to come in from concrete. 10 seconds, remaining. Ten seconds but they get that extra 45. A very important post plant but the worry is that isolated player in the middle. Sandbox has to time this to perfection and the cover is the big ask. What side are they going to go for the angle from? Envy Taylor hits an air jab and gets absolutely torn apart by the bullets and now Nova has hit a couple of laser beams so far. Two more to go for it. Plays and sprays but DK lock off the revenge round. Good attempt there if Nova didn't dig in that deep into the 90 pillar, but actually decided to use it to hold the entry into the side. It could have been a completely different round. He was going to be able to pick up these gunfights instead. And of course, the air jet there as well. Very important kill from Rin. After that, was being hunted down as well. And a good response from that one, actually, to try and hunt that one roamer who took down Rin, dug in deep into the vault. And oh, this is what, of course, the Nitro was eventually meant for. They weren't quite able to get the hit. A fast start, an aggression and knowledge. And that's obviously always going to be my favorite takeaway of these two teams is when they know each other so well, what we get is the highest pressure possible environment. Okay, we're fighting for ascension on the planes that we have here in Sweden. But at the same time, it's having to double down your game. You can't run the stuff because they know it. Not yep. just from APAC North, but from Korea Open as well, where this time, neither of these teams actually made it into the final. How strong is Korea right now? Yeah, that is a big question. Uh, they said it before as well. Well, the two teams that didn't go to the major, they uh, were number one and two. So uh, Korean Open is the best tournament in the world. I mean. <laughs> Maybe. I guess we'll have to see if this is the start of the rise of the new left. huge Korean overlord scene inside Siege. Static is going to see if he can Five get something cheeky left. out the door. He's opening up the prep and kind of putting a bit of caution into the approach. Jacket and I do like that that's how Sandbox are playing into this. They're not really letting Damon Kia get Bob comfortable. They're forcing located. challenges and questions quite early on. They're happy to lean in and swing into the fight. And if you're sort of looking at how it's gone throughout Sandbox, Previously, it's down to MB Taylor and Shiloh really stepping up, and they haven't been as consistent this tournament. I'd say that they've always been that duo on, on the side of Sandbox, right? Um, they've always been the ones that really pop up. Basically, like Speak Easy and Hysterics were uh, for uh, Invictus, that is. And, and there's many duos across that. And in any given, uh, given team, you can, you can name two of those players who always frag out together if everything goes well. Nonetheless, it is currently one to one. The question here is, will the players become more defense-sided or stay attack-sided like the rest of the major seems to have been? So far, it's 50-50. <laughs> that was a... I think it's a picture picture. Yeah, it's yeah. a picture picture. Yeah, the cool stereo version. They have really built a bunker with the salvation stations on the back corner. The grenade doesn't entirely connect, but they have that healing. They have the ability to pick themselves back up. They are playing a dangerous game of burning utilities. We have seen those very same tools be part of the best clutch I have maybe ever seen inside this game, in a game in the groups earlier on. So it becomes this battle, this back and forth of creatively putting yourself little pockets of health and reinforcing what are dangerous and frequent grenade traps. Now Sandbox going uh, to well, receive some of the aggression here in with the jump in, spots out a player right behind the deer, but Got taken out by Woogieman, actually, instead of by Rin. Rin just completely skipped past that. Doesn't matter in the end, though. In the end, as the Diffuser, however, does get dropped That It's going to be Big Shot. In the meantime, rotating back up as well. Gets a little bit of damage done onto Rin. Decides to swap back on him as well. Four on four. Minute on the clock. The Diffuser has been dropped. Needs to be regained. And they still think that might be a player potentially on the roam here. God, that drop is such an awkward one as well. It's just a little bit out of the beaten path for either entrance. So Rin's gonna see if they can make some work done on the route round, gets a bit of revenge for this break through the top and there's almost a drop on a body, finds a new angle. Do they, do they not know? Are they see? expecting the swing? Well, they definitely Attackers suffer from it. Wiggy Man in the meantime gets the pick up and the slip away happens past Katsang. Hello, says Nova and goodbye to Yas as their drop, but still the body above is pinged out. The explosions cover 
of the movement. A clever bout of play, but look, another trap is set. They're trying to get a catch, and at one point, Harper's going to have to slip his way back towards the site from Art to see if he can put some pressure on the backside of Rid. Nova, lying down on the close, is going to get the fight. They don't know! They're back to back! How did that slip away from each other? Still unaware, Harper is going to swing around the corner, and Rin locks it off! Imagine if he would have just seen, uh, seen it right there. That would have been Rin. A double kill ended the round there for, for him. And then we were like back to back to each other. They had no clue. It's one of those awkward moments where, where both of each other, you miss each other when you're walking past each other, for example, it's in the city. Two ships passing in the night. Yeah, exactly. Back to back and they've got guns. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's, so it's, it's it. the horror movie where you accidentally bump backs with the monster and then you think it's your friend and you turn around like, oh, and then it's, oh. <laughs> and then, then it seems to be the monster indeed. Uh, the monster of Rin who picked up the very final two kills, of course, allowing them here to take the lead here. On Villa, two attacking rounds in a row now. That means that Sandbox is allowed to go back towards Aviator Games and indeed will do so as well. But if you remember correctly, it was due to the fact that the fuser was dropped in the very first engagement, Nova, with that shotgun, who managed to escape earlier as well from death when moving down the stairs. And the question there is, um, if that would have gone the other way, would have been damn one Kia right now that was 3-0 up. I, I think so. If Nova would have dropped there due to Rin having the concussion now, that would have been a different round. That would have been a 3-0 for DK now. Gonna take a very quick moment here. Just a very quick moment to shout out our amazing observing team. Yes. Uh, medics, Easy and Marcy. The They've all got different roles in and amongst it, but things like that little picture in picture was the combination Attackers of the three of them working. And, and that gave us an amazing moment. We are so lucky to have such a talented troop leading the visuals in the game. It just brings so much more hype. Oh, I love Major Ship. <laughs> two to one. That one gear, two to one. Now, they've been able to pull themselves ahead. They've been able to put a bit of pressure down onto Sandbox, but it's not as if it's been easy. The fights have been consistent. Yeah. Sandbox are leaning in, and we've always got to remember, this is Damwon Kia's map. Coast, it's a bit up in the air. It's put it out on the desk. They both play it quite a lot, but the lock in there is the grenade on the first. Envy Taylor doesn't see, well, several guns. There was the chassis of the site blocking Rin on the upside down repel, but we also saw the pressure coming from the bedroom at the same time. Yeah, didn't really want to put his back towards it, so tried to slowly back out whilst holding the angles, but as a result, wasn't able to see Rin for the upside down repel to come in with that kill. Two to one and five to three More currently in this site. DK have a big advantage here. Loading new now it's going to be an instant replay. All the games are being recorded from their individual oh. perspectives, so uh, we do no longer miss any kill at any given moment. Those are also being called in. Great, great team. You said it before. Everything, Everything. is being recorded now. There's and no obviously hide. all the names of everybody from the production staff that makes that it. That as well. well. That's a lot of names, and we'll be going on the entire... I would feel bad if I left out a few. That as well. Red in the meantime, though, looking to find yet another entry, whereas the rest of DK is looking to open up onto the strategy table. Shield does get removed, however, and two Sandbox members are currently in the same room, where Shao tries to rotate out towards the vault, provided a bit of an extra angle that can uh, hopefully try and hold back DK with for just a little bit of time. That's exactly what he does. Gets that first kill onto Katzang. Spots out the feet of Rin as well, but they're very well aware now of his current position as Yas sneaks through. They're going to be able to pick up Static from, I believe that was below. Oh, there's another spray through. Yas with a double kill just leaves Nova, but he's got someone holding this push on the far side. And with the stun, couldn't quite get the connection. Damwon Kia, their third round in a row. And it looked the strongest so far. A very good take on the other side of the map. They yep. knew exactly how to close down on the Sandbox players. That game that Sandbox are playing of being a bit loose, a bit wild, a bit out there on the roam and reactive, well, it's starting to be punished. And it reaches the point of, okay, is this Damon Kia warming up? Is this how it should have been from round one? Or does Sandbox have to try and change some things up here because they've been worked out? They have to come up with a new way to try to strike fear into the team that's made everybody panic. But that's it, right? Sandbox is just being completely picked apart here. All the angles are being watched. They're just waiting patiently, and Sandbox keeps walking into them, into those lines of sight. As a result, they just pick up these kills every single round, especially that double entry at the start here. Um, really helps them, of course, to kick off that round. 
into their favor. Suddenly, you have the opportunity to continue trading with two extra men. Well, that normally does go your way. It's very rarely we see those kind of clutches come through. Of course, we have seen quite a bit of them on this map, especially during the Space Station Gaming versus Empire Group Stage game. You mentioned it before already, but honestly, that game, I those two clutches... I, I think about that when I fall asleep. <laughs> th those two clutches, though, that could have been the difference maker between who made it between Empire and Space Station Gaming in the end, because it did come quite close. Either way, 3, 2, 1. Round number 5 is on its way. Sandbox, they really want to make sure that they pick up at least another round to create a bit of a buffer for themselves. They will be going over to the attack very shortly. And, well, so far the tournament has been kind to the attackers, more so than the defenders. Yes. DK will also notice. Um, 5-1 scorelines have not been too uncommon so far throughout the tournament. Because, yes, on a very tight angle here. Doesn't know that he could just wall bang static here as he does make some noise. But who knows, he might just try and peek in right after it. Or maybe the yellow ping will come in as well. Obviously, with the way the tournament was put together, this is also the first time we've seen regional really? play, not inter-regional play. Rip, Envy Taylor gets dropped, goes for the second ring, can't quite get the connection. Pre-fires every single angle and almost catches the head of Shia, but there's the revenge. Now he's looking towards the back of Art to see if somebody tries to get revenge on the revenge. It's a great take on the close window there, the spray, the pre-fire, and the knowledge, and now you see Damon Kia working out how they can work from the deficit. They've not just lost the trade, but then one beyond that. They know one could still be in the library and living room area, but nonetheless, we need to continue to clear out the sites. Grenades are being tossed in, a static strikes at the right moment. That grenade will now drop and take out Nova, actually still bringing it to a two on three situation. The diffuser in the meantime has been recovered. Woogie Man and Katzing are the two left of DK that need to make sure that they reach their fourth round here. They're up against three sandbox players. Now, it's not uncommon. We've seen it done before, and especially if they lock off the very first strike with the bit of verticality that is still going on. They could have the opportunity to fight this two on one on the actual side. Grenade comes in close. Corners, though, could have actually bounced back and gone for the double TK, but that luckily did not happen. As DK continued to try and find a strike. The question is, how long will Static stay below? And that's it, because he's not playing with a C4 in pocket, but what he's playing is the hope that they charge in somewhere and he can just get behind them. He causes problems, and he's hoping the separation forces a one versus one. He can potentially take a bit of a gamble, a bit of a fight, and get an angle on somebody who's much more laser-focused on what needs to be done on the site itself. The body on the top of red stops that study entrance, so Katzang has to add a little bit of width, and it's going to battle down the long corridor that beats around the entire heart of this site. Drops the cam, gives the game away 30 seconds. Seconds, though, the push has to come sooner rather than later. And still, without that study clean entrance, with the fight that's going to happen on Vault and on the door, there is just no real route through unless it is via a hail of fire. It's just going to have to be a matter of a quick count. And look at Sandbox giving nothing away. Playing the reverse on the shield. They are letting down one Kia sit. Oh, marinate, but the grenade gets one. Katzang drives his way deeper. That's the body on red gone. That's the attempt on the plan on the strategy. That's one more take for Sandbox. They're not quite connecting with Katzang, and he's able to oh. just... Well, he gets the plants, that. <laughs> he gets the plant. I was, I was thinking, like, it's taken quite a long time here before uh, they're actually going to be going for it. In the end, they still managed to pick up the kill right after the defuser went down. But if that was any second later, that gun would have been online again, and he would have been able to try and go for the challenge. And who knows who might have ended it. Sandbox. They start the ground off great. Well, not that great with Ring getting the very first, but after that, they managed to strike back from using these impacts to create these long angles. And of course, a pre-fire from Shaw as well. He himself, those double kill route right there, really crucial just. to that round. And just in time, of course, with that grenade as well. Static just too late to save his teammate, but nonetheless, there was a trade coming in right away. Great nade there, great pickup. I guess we'll see what happens with the scrappy ending. They were just, the pings were there like constantly. I think they were hoping he would step up, but they had the pre-fire as well. One of the things to also take into consideration with this is out of all of the teams that qualified, these two teams had a slightly different journey. Damon Kier obviously came in really big and loud on their first day in groups. Second day got a little bit shaky, and they were the last team to be confirmed. And then they confirmed themselves in first place. Granted, they needed one point from their final game, but still, 
it's a point. You have to at least get exactly. six rounds. It wasn't certified. And they could have not been here. It could have been an entirely different show with Empire being the other team that listed on. But then they find their way to the top. Sandbox were confirmed a little bit earlier. But out of all of the teams, statistically, their players have played the weakest this tournament in that every other team on the overall rating has at least two, and in a lot of cases, three players rated above the best rated player from Sandbox this tournament, Evan Taylor. Yeah, uh, that, that makes you worry just a little bit. Um, but what's even more impressive is the feat that Damon Pia struggled when they returned from Mexico. Their stage three was pretty weak compared to their stage two. Um, they were forced to go through the playoffs. They wanted to qualify and successfully did so, but also just barely, really, being knocked down to the lower bracket from the very get-go. They still managed to make it happen from there on, but they're here now. First seat in their groups and currently around ahead on Sandbox. They want to be the Korean team that carries their hopes and dreams for the major and for the region. I love seeing that over the top. The shape up is physically put before you, everyone at home. So you really get a taste of just how this all comes together. The territory that they're trying to set up that cross angles on is that bathroom and then obviously the master bedroom itself. Look at this. As sneaky as the G and lasagna, Yas is going to find their way up the back stairs, but the proximity gives the game away. Can he find a little bit out of what is otherwise put before him? Envy Taylor is the slow creep behind. He wants a bite out of that player, and he's going to make sure he takes it slowly. But look at Rin watching for the roam. They are prepped for this, and that buys them a fight elsewhere. A minute 30, though, and they've got to start trying their collapse here. DK with another Hail Mary grenade. Oh, gets him! Gets the player, but that will be a pickup. Surely they're close enough. The second grenade goes, and the drone might have just been blocked there by the chassis on the view. Not quite sure, but either way, that's going to be every Taylor that gets swung on. Not quite sure if that was a drone that had the information. I believe it was. No, but in the meantime, though, has, been picked, uh, has picked up Shell, and that means that it is a 4 and 5 situation. A lot of drones have been lost, however. And there's only 3, 5 maybe still available to them for the last minute right now, but they need to get them in these positions and try and figure out where the Sandbox players are currently. Because DK, well, they just really have Solarium. There's no opening into the wall. They will have to go through these choke points. Shail, now he's obviously picked up and he's going to look for a fight as Nova tries to lock off on that little hop in window to make sure they don't have a back to the side. Shail clears one, finds a nook with the knife and takes the second fight. Shail gets, gets the, the third! third! Up the back stairs, shines in astronomy, and now it is just coated left. 30 seconds. Can they pull anything together? They're Buff, they're rebuffed, they're pushed back away from their main entrance onto Trophy. So finds a root round and a little bit of health, but it won't save you from that. Uh, the headshot from Static to come in. What a triple kill that was as well to come through. Just that knife to stay sneaky, gets the second right after with the gunfight. And then uh, slowly creeping up to the third, who seemed to have no idea where the actual push was coming from at that moment in time. Surely, a bit of panic just ran through the comms there, and somehow Sandbox are able to bring it to 8-3-3. to As the grenade's being pulled out here, we are going to see a bit of a replay from that. Just a second. Yes, of course, with the very first, but Shao, that 20 HP, he was the man that was down before as well. Snipe, that's the first, and the third. You don't often see a knife. Uh, oh, you don't often see it. In General Siege, you... You could probably count the amount of times you've seen a knife kill on the major stages that in two teams that know each other, as we go back in. Apologies glass. for that. Oh, glass. Well, we're getting back okay. into a banger here. All right. Okay, okay. Let's uh, I'll Maybe finish my point. The two teams that know each other well, you're more likely to get standard average map statistics because they Attackers will be way less surprised. Yeah, for sure. Um, they know each other through and through, they know each other's strategies, they probably scrimmed against each other every now and then as well, so... There's little hidden between these two. Uh, and you're like, well, do, do they only play Apex North? No, they also play... Um, Give by the way. Uh, coaches watching that are gonna be like... Oh, yes. Rubbing their hands together. I, I want this <laughs> like, all yes. the time. Give um, me all of the angles. But to continue, they also play each other in the Korean Nationals. Yes. So the Korean Open, that is called. Um, every single time. So it's not just 
once they meet each stage, so three times a year. Now there's also, I believe it's three or four Korean Opens, which are double round robins, so, uh, and another six to eight games in there. I am super curious about this class. MV Taylor, yeah, six so picking to the glass. He's gone zero to five. He has not had a good game, but, Luckily, some of the players who weren't quite able to step up during the groups have been, especially Nova, who was quite quiet throughout it. He's got four plants, but it's one of the lowest out of any of the teams, especially in the actual playoffs itself. So, why not go to the glass? I'm trying to figure out why. Like, it could be a bit of a of a surprise, right? They don't know where's the glass. Maybe a smoke canister pops out. So, you know, someone just stays active within it. Don't really know what's going on. You see it right now happening as they're going very aggressive here into the side. Hopper gets the first, but the plant's going down in the meantime as they do find a response. Covering and blowing through it. Envy Taylor gets his first and that gun goes bang. Woogie Man is down in this fight in this moment. They're going to see if they can try and pull themselves back round. Katsang and Coded. The two players get Woogie Man up and they find their way into Vault. It's behind the door. They get a little bit of a crossfire, but Nova locks it off. That is two. This is a quick round. And I said Nova had showed up better this game. And then he goes and does that. It's... it's <laughs> Honestly, I, I was just looking at it, I'm like, how, how is this glass going to work out, first of all? And what I was thinking, what I was trying to explain as well, right before the push is maybe, right, they don't give away that information, they throw that smoke, give a false sense of security, because, you know, we all know smokes are no walls, but if they can see you, you cannot see them. Unless there's a glass or a warden on the other side. That is when you can actually see them there. Nova gets that plant through. With the cover of Envy Taylor, of course, that's that false sense of security. See that? There's the smoke. He's like, well, they're not watching that angle. That means I can just run right around the corner and get that kill whilst the man from landing is covering the study door. And that didn't happen. That really pushed through that eventual round. Just that glass. Surprise pick. That worked out in the end. In the meantime, though, we are going towards Trophy and Statuary. It's going to be another defensive round here for DK. Sandbox have retaken the lead, which they've lost ever since round one. Now, setup looks pretty standard from now on. We do have the Aruni to come in. No am I, meaning that grenades could be quite effective. Yet again, the glass being picked. Surely, and surely, we're not going to be seeing yet another quick push to come through. DK should be ready for that. They should now know as well that if a smoke canister is being used, that you should not just run right through it. So, heading over to the split site and seeing if they can offer themselves a bit of an extension here. They're not going to try and double down, but Envy Taylor surely is. The glass is back. Revenge for a rush. I mean, if it works again, I would be surprised. But we've been surprised by many things this tournament. Damn one Kia. They find themselves for the second time this game on the back foot and the second time after the first round. But they then built themselves up. They got a bit of an awakening and they started to get a bit of strength and tied three rounds in a row. That's all it would take so far to secure themselves OT at least. And a well, the game is still all the way. Is this another thing prepped here? Another rush? I don't know, they're all setting up on all these different angles. Static is about to toss in a grenade. That will land in the middle of the site as Nova is the first one to get popped up. I'm not quite sure if he had the supernova, but he's being tagged right now from two different sides. Coated trying to run out will successfully do so now as it is going to be a player from below that does take down Static and Envy Taylor falls as well. They tried to go quick here, but only Harper and Shala left and well, they need to find five DK players. Well, I said if they did it, it probably wouldn't work and well, it hasn't worked. <laughs> a very quick attempt. And it was calculated. Don't get me wrong. They calculated the risk. They worked out where they wanted to have the engagement. But Damon Kia was sharp to it. They were tuned into it. Those back-to-back -back rushes, it becomes the test of will they, won't they. But wow. Harper with a fantastic take there. And he's still just got to find four more. And it becomes this game, though. They're aware of the potential of the rush. And that audio cue of rush becomes so much cleaner. And that's the main thing. That's the main thing indeed. Rin cleans it up. This time the rush did not work out, so Sandbox now have to make a decision. Do we try it on a new site or do we do we just completely bin it for now? Maybe bring it back during the OT. But that's the thing, right? A rush works once, not twice in a row, mm -hmm. but it could work twice and a half. Rogue have definitely shown that in some of their group stage games. 
Vitality have as well. So if Sandbox are going to be bringing this back later on in this matchup, we might see more success again, coated with this very important first skill. If that would have gone the other way around, then surely it could have been, uh, again, Sandbox taken over, but... DK was ready for it this time around. They knew exactly where they were going to be entering from and just cleaned them up one by one by one. If it wasn't for Harper to just get that one beautiful one tap, making sure it was not going to be a flawless round for DK. Back to AVG we go and back to a site that obviously was the end of a rush. Hey, that's a different lineup from Sandbox. Yeah, they're not going to go for another glass smoke rush. They're going to make sure that they have a little bit more security over the game itself. They still have the Finger, they still have the Ash and the possibility of destruction, but this is a lineup that speaks to the control that they want to put across it. And to be fair, when we've seen them throughout APEC North and when we've seen them throughout this tournament, their attacks have been where they're more comfortable. They've been able to sort of drive themselves into this game and into this fight without so much of a worry, without so much of a fear in terms of what their opponents are putting before them. The gay gonna be trying to rerun their first side, Aviator Games. It was prone to a rush before on the side of Sandbox. They were able to well, clean it up really with a quick plan that of course has supported the glass, which gave a false sense of security to them. But that's not gonna be working out anymore. Slow is what they're currently trying to have to do right here. Try and get these picks one by one as the window does get punched open by the Uruni there. And if he drops to its safety. This Rin opens up the hatch as well to allow a quick way out if the pressure becomes too hot. Holding. And a little bit of caution in what has been a very quick two rounds. And there was a spray towards Coded and Static. They have an awareness on him and they're trying to find a little bit more of the aggression towards them. Drop down on the corner of the stairs and pops the smoke early to stem the potential approach. A few frags, a few grenades, and a little bit more of a clearance with Yas stacked up on the top of the stairs to offer any protection against study, or at least an awareness towards a they're coming, let's fight. But there it is. A great take by Static. Yet again, they're able to drop that body, an important clutch player on that corner of this hold. Lose two more smoke canisters. Yas steps up, blinded by the flash. They cannot truly stick around too much. Katang pops a bullet, retreats. Surely not, they're going to be trying to take that top floor now as Hoogerman finds a response. 90 seconds left on the clock and all Sandbox, they really want to be taking control of these main stairs as Envy Taylor does take care of Boogeyman. That's the man now removed from the actual bomb site. And with that brown stairs under control, they just need to get rid of the serial laser gaze. That gives them an opportunity to head into the study yet once again. As Shao, knowing that one could be swinging close, trying to you know, return some of that fire. Has the LMG available to him, of course, does not need to reload. As the pressure is starting to rise here on DK, it's Yas that is completely concussed, trying to find a bit of an elevated angle to surprise whoever comes around the corner first of Sandbox. But they know that they have some time left. Still 50 seconds as they're all starting to set up. One member currently off the side, but the rest on the side of Sandbox, all on that brown stairs area. Another moment. Another pause and another bout of caution as they're going to see if they can set themselves up for potentially something under that final thinker rush. Nova can apply the pressure here and with Envy Taylor on the lock, it's just a matter of making sure they connect the dots. The swing comes in and they're curious about dabbling with danger, but it's Red on the backside that gets the first fight and drop by Envy Taylor, a very important kill and his second for the round, but yes, on the back of the bar is only serving up pain. 15 seconds and they got to see if they can make the connection here over the top. Static gets one more and yes! Well, the bar is closed, and we go back and forth to a 5-4. 5-4 indeed on its way, and Sandbox was the team back when they were in the Cloud9. The first team that really brought Finca to APAC together with, I believe, back then it was Xavier. Those two teams would really use it as what we called the Bunker Buster. You just use it to move quickly through uh, any any bot wires, but also to make sure that these gunfights would go your way, especially with these LMGs that they have on the team. Inside the shot, of course. So you that fire and just a single laser beam here is uh, it's just it's, it's quite hard to lose a gunfight like that when you literally have no recoil. It's so many, like, it's either tight moments or punished mistakes. You can really see that difference of what they know about each other and then what is new to this. Using one as well, but now in a bit more, you know, bit by bit more methodical. 
They also seem to be able to find the angles on DK without them really being able to put up a strike on the side of Sandbox. So we're heading towards the kitchen, towards the dining room, up to that bottom floor we go. Nitro cells often play an important role here, and very often you do see a pulse that is currently being used. Now, not the case here, no pulse, but we do see a Valkyrie coming out. So possibly DK is going to be using some of these Valkyries to guide Nitros to that top floor instead. And is you really want to make sure that you pick them up when you do not have to challenge them to a head-to-head -head gunfight because that is the most dangerous thing once it gets horizontal or rather vertical uh, with the sledge aesthetic who can open up the ceiling that is when you start losing players on the side so you need to make sure that you hit some targets with those nitros before the damage is done by the side of sandbox Okay, Sandbox, they've had their attack timeout, and you know that you're putting pressure on, but you also know that they've just had a time to try and pull some of this pressure back. Can you keep the momentum on? One more round secures you that OT, and to be fair, hitting that margin is huge, because then you have two chances to lock it out, two chances to mean you're one map away, your map away, from finding yourselves the first Korean team inside the semis. They're going from the bottom floor here with the sledge. Uh, I've mentioned it before, they need to use that verticality to try and sneak in, but this could be a very another quick round coming through from Sandbox because they're currently sneaking up the back stairs here. There's a player inside of Mud. Rin is the first one to fall. Yeah, still on that top floor. Could drop the hatch at any given moment or try and cover it as well. But they find a way into the side. But Yas actually manages to reply. It's going to be the diffuser that gets picked up. But Static will be able to cover that one off. Needs to get the knife kill, but fails to do so on the actual cam. And it's a bit of a panic right here. But they still are in a position where they could go for a plant. And Nitro comes through. Grenades being tossed out. It's a bit of panic on every other side. With 3v2 currently left, they have the opportunity to go for the plant. The shout just catches one more of guard. Boogeyman, however, drops the diffuser in a very crucial moment. Now, with a minute 40, they do have time, but it's a two versus one, and you wonder when you want to try and apply this pressure. There's a reveal, there's a spray, and the pings actually come through, so they have something back, but you've got to wait for that ticker timer to go. They know exactly where he is, but again, has the time. He's going to go for a drift around the other way. They're probably expecting a bit of a stretch. Yep, you know, it's fake this time round. So you've got your creep in. They've got a crosswatch from the other side of the door, and that's going to be the chance of the reveal. And there it is. Revealed and dropped. And DK, they take us back to level. Close corner checked. Unfortunately, the wrong one. Yes, playing from that top floor above that hatch. Basically stopped that rush, stopped that round on his lonesome. Dropped the diffuser and the extra man that could have been on the site for the cover. Otherwise, that plan would have gone down quite early on. And you saw the panic right away from, well, DK members there were left on the side, but also the Sandbox members who were trying to go for a quick plant here. And that is how Shao picked up that very first kill. I believe that might have been droned in here as Yas. Very, just, just perfect moment there. Able to catch up that diffuser. Really slowing that push from truly coming to life. Grenades over the top and just aggressive sprays on the drive-in was something that they were able to find some success with, but as we saw, Damon Kia, they had the tack time out and it carried them across. However, it still came down to the two versus two. It still came down to what was a bit of a flip of the coin. Granted, it's for a lot of teams a rougher sight and a lot of trickier plays, but I guess let's see if they can find some success here where they found it before. They obviously took trophy previously, but when we were here previously, Sandbox tried a rush, which obviously since then, they've decided not for us. I mean, the previous round was kind of an attempt, right? They completely ignored that top floor, and well, as a result, Gas was able to stop the quick push to come in through the basement. Um, just a member repelled up an Astro, for example, could have just completely uh, changed that around by putting up some pressure on that window, at least forcing to drop down the hatch. That could have been another free kill to come through. Out of the way, 5-5, five to five. we are staying quite close with the teams here. Whoever wins this round is the one that truly puts up the pressure to the other. This time, we don't work with points though. It's not you get one point if you at least secure the overtime, no. That if you secure the overtime, you, you secure the opportunity to get one of those maps underway. That's currently not going to happen yet. Rin, taking a bit of damage there from the very first grenade, starting to barricade up. But I was going to say Harper is in a position to just swing around the corner, but that was a little bit further, or rather, behind, compared to where it got to. 
Sandbox. Now, strangely, the pressure's on you. You lost the one after the damn one key around. They've been able to at least claw some of this pace back and look at the pace they're trying to claw back. They're being more adventurous underneath. They're looking for a little bit more potential in the fight. Yas has locked their way and obviously still has a bit of a pocket, but it seems like Harper's aware of it. Not that aware, though. There's Yas, as I said, tucked away, ready for the drop. And Kat sang there, too. This is a good stretch and a big change for Damon Kia. Instead of sort of sitting back onto the site and the holds itself that they've since realized Sandbox are really good at taking, they've gone, well, let's play the game they were playing. Doesn't always work out. Shail gets an easy pick there against Yas, but the Katsang not far away. It's still far from over. It's still far from over. It is 90 seconds on the clock, and Sandbox is looking to be entering from two, three different sides. Gulli's playing a very unpredictable game here, and that is currently keeping Damon Kia on their toes because they need to make sure that they reply to whatever quick aggression or more slow methodical movement Sandbox is bringing is in proportion. Um, has worked out in some of the rounds here. Two of them at least one on their defense so far. But as the pings are starting to come through on the defense itself, it seems like they are aware that the pressure is coming through. Grenades are being tossed in from below, but will not be managing to hit anybody as of yet. A bit, you know, of damage towards utility. That will probably be about it. 50 seconds, Sandbox, and although you've been able to clear some of the underneath, that's the game that Damwon Kia are able to play, which they just could not pull off before. It's a slow, it's a stem, and it's still a cat saying deep in wine, waiting and enjoying a rotation potential that we saw win around for Sandbox previously. The close spray doesn't quite connect for Coded, but now they know that the pressure's over the top. There's a little bit of a time buyer, not pop quite yet it and waits for this shotgun swing round. Flashes over the bop, there's the pack, there is the corner and there's the drop, but look at that! The double over the top, Woogie Man from the bedroom gets one more! A C4 locks it off and down one Kia get themselves map point. See that Nitro that locked it off in the end there, but at the moment that the smoke canister pop was the moment that the adrenaline surge was activated as well. So they took double damage really moving through more than they might have expected. Led to two eventual downs, of course a kill right after as well. And now DK have that match point or map point rather. Could be locking off the first here. It was expected to go towards them. Sandbox, however, putting up a very strong fight. Their attacks, however, they seem to be a bit unpredictable and, and sometimes not truly uh, fully cohesive. Is this drop? I, I didn't understand why. They might have had information on Yas, but not super up to date. Sharp goes on that angle watch, was able to pick up one, but in the end, too much damage done by the smoke canister as well as a player inside the concrete that would just be able to strike them down. And for their match point, DK will decide to go to Aviator Games. That will be the very next site you'll see as they uh, quickly give, give each other some fist bumps. Make sure that the motivation stays high. Sandbox, they are putting up a very close fight, but they're not the ones that have the map point now. Okay, Sandbox. It's been back and forth up to this point for quite a while. On your defenses at the beginning of the half, it was big chunks. Everyone was taking about three before they found themselves suddenly in a situation of, okay, we're on the other half. Here, it was back and forth, attack time out, and now finally, Dan Monkia tied two together. They build a bit of pace, and again, I love the extension. I love that they're making Sandbox more uncomfortable on approaches where Sandbox have never looked more comfortable with things like a cheeky glass rush. I, I really love that glass rush, by the way. Um, kind of unfortunate we saw it the second time around because they were going to be ready for it as Envy Taylor is looking to pick up. Oh, a kill here. No, goes off on the angle at the very wrong moment here. Of course, Sandbox already had the entry on their name. The player is still there. No shots being fired so far. It is quite close. In the meantime, you see that replay on Shao, who is so good at getting these kills through the window. I believe it was just a pre-fire, it might not even have any information, but it still helps off that you pick up Yas, a player that has 11 kills currently. He is such a driving force on the side of DK, to get away Rin after. Well, the drop drone, and he's playing this a little bit more cautiously than he was before, as they've still got some of the giveaway. The Banshee do scream at the potential of a swing up, and Sandbox is scarpered for now. Katzang on the stretch is just making sure they have some of the lock, and they know how important this can be. Rin, with the late round Valka Cam on the outside, is going to see what trouble can be caused. That grenade causes none. 
Nova hoped it would lead to a swing round, but again, that's the difference here. There's a lot more caution on those main stairs being played. Instead, the extension is the pressure elsewhere. The canister stops any rise and any chance of sandboxing if they can claim it. And in similar situations to what they forced upon Damon Keel, we might start to have to see a late round rotation and reimagination of what they can do. This grenade could be dealing huge damage indeed. It does, it's Ket saying that is fallen now. Coded is trying to put up some pressure here, retaking these brown stairs, using these smoke canisters to try and waste some time but the pressure is coming in from the steady side as well. There's still a minute 10 left on the clock. There's no way he can waste as much time, but Woogie Man in the meantime is coming from the back as Harper takes quite a bit of damage. The question is, is Woogie Man going to continue this flank or is he falling back towards the side because Sandbox is about to be ascending the stairs right here into an opportunity to try and cover it off. The all damage will be done by the smoke canister, but it's just a single tick and they now have control of those round stairs. Rin gang one back and Shyle on the flank watch for Woogie Man who's going to see if he can make his way up the stairs. He is concerned about the drone but there's still a body about to hit the main door as well. Shyle's going to find the fight instantly. The pings and he gets it. A very important take and suddenly it is just coated on the back line. A clutch player many times before but no canisters. He gets dropped on the first spray and Sandbox take us to OT. There you have it. They take it to OT, and who would have expected otherwise, considering these two teams know each other through and through. There's so much on the line now. They want to be, they both want to be the first, well, the, the Korean team that goes to the semis and carries the hopes and dreams of APAC and their country. Because it has been such a long time since we've seen an APAC team in semis. The diffuser. And will this be? Well, we will know that it, it is going to be an APEC team in there. But which one will it be? Is the big question. Is it going to be Sandbox? Is it going to be Demon Kia? And whoever picks up this first map after these next three rounds, it's a bit of a bit of a sprint game now. Whoever gets to in the next three wins the game. Or rather, the map is going to be in a good position for the remainder of this best of three. So, you know. They, they need to win it because otherwise they're out of the tournament and they are going home. And, and that is the truth about it. One of these two teams, potentially after the next map, is going to uh, be eliminated. But first, we still have three more rounds to play to before we even start talking about that second map. It is DK on that defense yet once again. And there is no true favorite, I would say. If you looked at the rounds, three to three on the splits, either way, 50% win rate on either side. Now, I think, however, Sandbox, they have a lot more left in their attacking side. Their attacks were often quick. Two rounds, they tried to go quick. Two rounds, they lost it as well. And those are two out of three rounds they lost in total. So, I think if they take this methodical and strategically, Sandbox should be able to pull out the win here. Again, that's one of the things that I really like about Sandbox's attack. And I talked about it a, a little bit briefly when it first started is their fearlessness. And one of the most obvious ways to see it is how they deal with smokes versus yep. other teams. They go through them. It doesn't slow them down. They go, okay, I'm gonna take this fight. They pre-fire and spray the chance on the angle and find a new spot to sit on the other side of it. Even if there's, you know, it doesn't matter how much time there is on the clock, they're gonna go through that smoke because they've already decided where they wanna be and a little bit of Little bad air isn't going to stop him. And I mean, if you have the Fink on the board, you can just heal up right after with the amount of damage you've done. You just got to be careful that you don't do it right before because otherwise you are going to find yourself taking the devil amount of damage. In the meantime, Harper taking control of that top floor, opening up into study, opening up the uh, vault as well towards the 90 area. Really to put up the pressure onto DK, the complete area of the map has been taken under control by Sandbox. The next point of worry, however, will be the red stairs. You can always see one or two players that maybe think about, you know, going on a bit of a flank. As Shal again playing on these windows, he's been able to consistently find kills on the back of them. Will not be allowed to do so now. Rin just holding passively here, waiting for a jump in, but the pinch is about to come through. Doors are starting to be opened, and surely they're about to be pushing in with two members at the same time as Harper is starting to open up from above as well. Rin will be forced out of the living room. Well, how can they start to bring this together here? Because that is half of the round gone. They've done a huge amount of structural work. They've looked for all the routes they've made. They're setting themselves up. As you said, a methodical approach. Hey, remember how they tried to take this side last time and how it failed? Yeah. 
the round was pretty much over by this point already. So they know what they need to do, and it's to keep themselves at a bit of a pace. Damwon and Kira trying to work out where the approach is coming from. In a way, so a sandbox. You can see them spread out huge all the way around the map. They're still trying to find a Damwon Kia player to pinch. They like to get one, maybe two entrances before they try and make the grand reveal of where they want to try and stick that diffuser. Nothing has been handed their way by Damwon Kia yet. I think what we're about to be seeing here is that Sandbox starts the eventual push onto the side and then we see Harper, the one a man up above, located. to start pushing through. He needs to pick up these kills to stop the verticals from hurting his team too much. And well, as Woogie is rotating around, checking vertical after vertical, he had been spotted on drones before. They know his well, rough position truly. As we're putting up a bit of damage here, we'll be trying to put up the pressure as well with some bullets flying their way. But Sandbox not too shaken yet, but they need to move now. 30 seconds, every player still alive and probably the first time we've seen that all game. The first grenade heads to Pantry and just does a bit of damage to Katsang. They have the hatch to drop, but they're going to take the fight and they're going to win it importantly. And the diffuser is cold in Pantry, takes the drop and suddenly it's a little bit back and forth, but it's all coming up red, but no diffuser. you got to pick it up. you got to run it to the site and hold F, but Katsang keeps it locked down and it's a huge clutch by Katsang. The fuse are moving in alone there through the pantry stairs, and that is eventually what lost them the round. Yeah, once again, Damwon Kia will be on the map point now. After it seemed like it was going Sandbox's way, they had the entries onto the side, just not the diffuser anymore. That one was caught off guard by a player into the pantry, which they were not aware of. The check was there, the gunfight was not. And as Yggdrasil is their final goal to reach the top of it, this cat sang that truly got this clutch on the way. The very first kill to come through. And as I said, the other kills all went Sandbox's way. It is just Cat Sang that was able to hold them off. They wanted to go for it. They wanted to pick it up first. Diana, the then the Nitro as he knew the pressure was about to come down. He didn't pick up the double, but at least stopped them from grabbing that diffuser yet once again and forcing him to go back up with the cover that was still there. You see, it means so much for them. They're ready for it. They're hyped. And we're going to Aviator Games. That is the side that Sandbox wants to defend on. And they know now as well that Damwon Kia, well, they're in the lead. They have the advantage. Can they bring it back, though? Can they let it come down to just a 50-50 at the very next round? Well, I'm kind of happy it's going all the way, you know? Obviously, it's still map one. It's the potential of the best of three, but the fact that these two teams were drawn against each other, the fact that all of the final representation of the possibility of this region is in this one game, and the fact that it decides who holds that massive mantle of being the first yeah. Korean team to go the distance. Oh, and one more fact that we've not seen these two giants of the region go up against each other in an extended series before. I really wanted this to be a fight, and it entirely is so far. So, Sandbox, can you bring back two final rounds? The big question here is the RC materials are about to start striking onto the utility of Sandbox. Angles are being watched pretty far as they're attempted, but Nova close around the corner. Wonder if he had been spotted before by any of these drones. Surely they'll check it before they start moving in through the study. Harper playing close as well, has the opportunity to just swing on the door when, you know, his teammate starts to get some of that pressure. A, bomb has been A very located. offside hold, however. I believe two or three members are currently below and they would need to go back up onto the red stairs. Yas currently has that under lock and key, so they will need to go through him or go all the way through Brown, which is a long way round towards the actual site. And Shallow is up 14 kills, that's exactly that. Takes the brown stairs under control as well. Will decide to be the next anchor on it though, as Rin trying to enter from the 90, just not find anybody. I think that's the main thing here, is how quick they're able to get a hold on that. I think they expected a little bit more of the early game from Sandbox. The loose play that was being punished by the end of it, Sandbox has learnt. They still have the roam. They still have the underneath player that has been in a huge effect. Yep. And Villa is vast. Villa is hefty. There's so much that you have to try and get a bit of control on. MV Taylor and Static can go to a floor that most people who have played this map, in my ranked games at least, don't even know exists. 
And that's the big problem here is DK are working out. Do we want to try and go for a deep dive? Something that's worked a little bit of the time, but mainly against us. Or do we try and keep a bit of the solidity on the angles? It seems like plan A is the pinch on the study towards the strategy table. And there is still the Nitro available, so you got to keep that one into mind. We could see Envy Taylor starting to push back up, and that's exactly what's currently happening. I see where Taylors are being used here to try and clear out the very final points of the site to make sure that they have the opportunity to plant, which is exactly what Kota does right now. Is Envy Taylor going to be able to come in time, though, with the Eftron Nitro? No, is the answer an awkward silence pauses and suddenly it is all to play for with 40 seconds. That's a slip through the fingers on the call. It's going to work entirely against Sandbox. Another one falls and Damo and Kira playing their angle game. Envy Taylor, one to drop and static. A play that slipped beyond the watch that they've been so exceptional on throughout all of this pushes them away. That staircase is closed, and there's at least one, but that is no more time, no more lives, and one map that just goes the way of Damwon Kia. And that's the first locked in for them. That means the pressure is truly on Sandbox. The GGs are still being called in the chat. You do not see that, but the map...